Back with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. Early voting's underway. The election's November 8th. Of course, you've got the governor's race. You've got the proposed constitutional amendments that's on the ballot. You've got local races all up and down. But there are other statewide offices that are up for consideration, and one of those being the Illinois Treasurer's Office. Incumbent Democrats Treasurer Michael Frerichs, he's running for re-election against two opponents. The Republican is Tom Demmer, the state representative from Dixon. But there's also a libertarian on the the ballots named Preston Nelson. Um, so I reached out to Nelson's campaign, have yet to hear back on his take on ESG investing. But I do have the takes of the Democrat incumbent and the Republican challenger, so we'll share that with you now. What exactly is ESG? Well, uh, it stands for Environment social and governance. And it's a standard that's being used to evaluate companies, public companies that people can invest in, and even states like Illinois, which uh, I saw the ESG score of the state of Illinois uh, from the uh, uh, Fitch Ratings Agency. And it was about uh, out of a scale of five, it was you know just below four. Uh, so what, uh, a full three points or so. Uh, but regardless, ESG, it's a standard that uh, some say is best for understanding if a business is going to be sustainable or not, uh, while others see it as investing for political motivations. Uh, and some of the things, of course, that uh, ESG looks at is do these companies take public policy positions on, say, green energy or renewable fuels? Uh, do they have certain standards when it comes to labor issues? And who exactly is going to set those standards? I think that's a, a big unanswered question that some critics of ESG funding have. Or in governance, do they have a diverse corporate board? Uh, and that's something else. Again, Again, some people uh, saying that uh, that kind of gets away from meritocracy and ensuring that you have the best people, uh, regardless of uh, their their skin color, uh, regardless of their gender. Do you have the best people on a board, uh, regardless of the the push for merit based approaches? Uh, ESG tends to give more deference and a better score to those who just have a diverse board, regardless of uh, any kind of, of, of merit. Uh, the, the merit seems to be based on you know, uh, your DNA rather than your, your actual performance. Um, but when it comes to investing you know, private dollars, if you want to do that with your own retirement account, you know, you're in the private sector, you, you work for the private sector, if you want to go and invest in ESG companies, that's entirely up to you. But there seems to be contention when you're looking at public dollars being invested in ESG companies. Uh, so I recently talked with um, the, the treasurer candidates, the Democratic incumbent held a news conference here in Springfield earlier this week, uh, not related to this, related to a different topic. Uh, but I took the time to ask him about ESG sustainable investing uh, and uh, was able to connect with the Republican candidates, uh, Tom Demmer, uh, shortly after and uh, got his response as well. So here they are back to back talking about ESG funding. Uh, first, Treasurer Michael Frerichs and then the Republican challenger, uh, State Representative Tom Demmer uh, on their philosophies of environment, social and governance investing. You know, we're not day traders in the state of Illinois. When we invest retirement savings funds, when we invest for college savings or savings for people with disability. These people have a longer term horizon. And so we want companies to consider all risk factors out there to make sure that they're making smart decisions that will make the companies continue to be viable for years to come. An example out there was a company like Purdue Pharma. You know, 90 or 90,000 deaths a year from opioid addiction. And a lot of this was pushed on people by companies, people who got injured, and they were told, hey, this OxyContin is safe, or something of the sort. But we found is that was a bad long-term investment because they had opened themselves up to reputational risk. They opened themselves up to regulatory risk, and they opened themselves up to litigation risk. And so a company that was very profitable today is bankrupt because of their decisions. I, I know that there are some states out there that have boycotted doing business with banks that had certain screens. And as a result, a study out of the University of Pennsylvania showed that Florida, ta no, Texas taxpayers are going to spend nearly $500 million more in issuing costs because they reduced 
competition. And if you really believe in the free market, you realize that the great thing about it is you have competition, it forces people to lower their costs. When you take away competition because of some political screen you have, it's actually costing the taxpayers less, it's costing them more money. In Illinois, I don't think we want to take that approach. I think the treasurer should be focused on maximizing the investment returns we have for uh, Illinois taxpayers. Uh, maximizing our returns is one way we can reduce some of the burden that's on taxpayer dollars uh, by getting the most uh, return we can for them. Now, look, there are a few exceptions to investment strategy, you know, for things that are have real overarching national security implications, for example. Uh, we don't invest in companies that uh, are, you know, headquartered in Iran or North Korea or things like that. Um, and I think those are some common sense exceptions. But when we look at investing in the broad uh, stock market and, and investing in funds that have holdings in various sectors, uh, we shouldn't be making politically motivated decisions. We should be making decisions that are in the financial best interest of Illinois taxpayers. But we shouldn't be, uh, you know, disinvesting in uh, normal American companies simply because, uh, you know, we don't think they've been uh, performative uh, or outspoken enough on uh, environmental policies, for example. We know today that there's a lot of those kind of companies that, you know, make a, a big statement on some of those issues and maybe they don't follow through with it or, you know, maybe they have shortcomings in other places. Uh, so I don't think using sort of these arbitrary outside standards is really going to give us the information we need to make a good decision for taxpayers. So, again, uh, those are the uh, two major party candidates sounding off on ESG investing. And the state of Illinois has $52 billion worth of public funds it invests in the market. Uh, and you've got states like Texas, Florida, and I believe West Virginia. Uh, they've taken a stance against ESG funding uh, saying that uh, it's it's not the best use of public investments to fund uh, politically sensitive issues or companies that take certain stances with politically sensitive issues. Uh, so again, uh, election is November 8th. Early voting is underway now. Uh, and that's just one of the races you're going to uh, have to choose on when you uh, pull your ballots. So uh, definitely uh, figure it's important to consider uh, the investment strategies uh, that uh, each of the major party candidates hold.